Thank you for watching our video on self-defense techniques. This video is on a technique called grasping twigs, which is required for beginner students at Ellis County Martial Arts. The attack is a two-handed wrist grab where they are trying to grab your wrist and drag you as they move backwards. So we're gonna use that energy to our advantage. So from this position, I'm gonna have you step over just a little bit, Mr. Bustamante, there we go, good. He steps in and grabs my wrist, and if I do nothing, he's gonna drag me backwards, okay? Now, he may shuffle backwards, like Mr. Bustamante did, which means he stepped with his right foot backwards and then dragged his left foot, go ahead. Okay, that's a possibility. Another possibility is that he just takes a step back with the left foot and pulls this way. It doesn't really matter to us. We will deal with that situation as it unfolds, but I just wanna make sure you understand that's a distinct possibility is that his legs could get switched. Now, when he starts to pull backwards, another possibility is that he's dragging me down into a headbutt, bang, from here. So I need to get off the line. So from this position, as he starts to pull, I'm gonna step over to the side. That way, if he was thinking about doing a headbutt strike, he's gonna miss. Now, as that happens, I'm gonna make sure my hands are open. I'm gonna use swords for this. And one of the reasons I want your hands open is because you're less likely to tense up the muscles in your forearms. And we need these muscle groups to remain relaxed to make this move work. So use the swords at this point. So from here, as he grabs, I step and I have swords. Now, I'm going to move my hands around in a clockwise circle. As it happens and they come up, notice that what I'm really doing here is I'm breaking the grip against the thumb. I'm breaking it this way with this hand, and I'm breaking it this way with this hand, okay? Even if he grabs really tight, go ahead and step back, and even if he hangs on really tight, as you come out from in here, the leverage you have going against the thumb, against the thumb, should break the grip. Now, of course, you have to use some common sense. If the person outweighs you by 200 pounds and is a foot and a half taller than you, chances are this is not going to work. Uh, but in general, it will work against an unsuspecting uh, ag aggressor. So when he comes in to grab and step, I'm going to circle from here. Now, I don't want to just break the grips because I actually put his hands in the same zone as my face. So when I break the grip, I'm also going to continue the action, and I'm going to chop with my left hand down and in to maneuver his hands down out of that zone. If you do this exactly like you're trying to chop him in the stomach, you'll probably get it right. So from here, it comes in and down. Notice how that checked his hands briefly over to the side. All right, now from here, I still have to worry about him lunging forward with the headbutt. That's a possibility. If he's been in some fights, he might come in from right there and hit me there in the face. So now I'm gonna take away his base. I'm gonna use my front foot, which in this case is my left, and I'm gonna kick out one of his legs. I don't know which leg is gonna be in front and it doesn't really matter. The goal is to cause enough pain and disruption of his balance so that he cannot come back in with the headbutt. All right, let's look at this again. All right, coming out from here, one and two, there's the side kick. Now from there, I'm gonna follow up with a front kick. And that's, normally he'll be bent over like this and the front kick is gonna come up here and catch him here in the chest, all right, coming up like this. If his arm is down from here, I would maybe have the possibility of the groin, but we don't know for sure. So we're gonna actually use a little bit higher target and come up here to the solar plexus. All right, let's look at that again. All right, I step, down, side kick, oh, front kick, and return. Let's look at that from this angle. All right, so from this position, he steps in the grab, starts to pull. I step off, clear, Side kick, in this case, come back. In this case, he had turned significantly sideways, so I alter my target. I'm still gonna do a front kick. I'm just gonna catch him here in the floating rib. All right, and that's also gonna cause a lot of pain, knock the wind out of him, probably knock him to the ground. So remember, follow through with the technique. You may have to alter the target, and that's okay. All right, now, another possibility on this is that he steps back with his left foot and leaves the right foot in front. And 
one possibility there is it is going to, again, is, is it's going to turn him a little bit more. So let's look at that slow motion. All right, come back up this way just a little bit, and there we go. As he grabs and pulls, notice how he leaves this leg in front. Okay, I still follow through. Now, if I sidekick from here and knock him down, great. But what happens if I sidekick from here and it actually turns him even farther? Sidekick, again, I change my targets. I can kick up in here. You say, uh, I can't kick that high. I'm not that good yet. Then attack this target down here. All right? That kick in there to the common peroneal is actually going to do a lot of damage as well. Remember, our goal here is to knock him to the ground. So use those kicking techniques the way they're designed to take him off balance and to the ground. The targets can be altered. The goal is the same. All right. Grasping twigs. Thank you. <laughs>